John Ennick comments on criticism towards John Jones over his preference to retire after UFC 309 or fight Alex Pereira instead of sticking around and taking the Tom fight. While the collective attempt of a large part of vocal fans on social media to basically troll him into changing his mind about fighting the interim champion might have started working on Jones, who has started to comment on the situation and address Tom in general, more frequently in the recent period, motivation of fans to do so isn't unified. For many, it obviously is simply an issue of wanting to see the champion stick around and take possibly the most difficult fight in the division. Many simply want to see the consensus GOAT lose, preferably by knockout. And the best hope for that to happen is Tom delivering it. But the whole sentiment of ducking and the attempts to undermine a legendary fighter have spread rapidly during the past couple of weeks. John Anik comments on the situation and points out difference in approach of these fans to George St. Pierre when he was in a similar spot. Based on, on their overall skills, Aspinall is a, um, a more dangerous fight for John Jones. Why? Because Pereira, amazing on the feet, absolute killer. So is Aspinall. The big difference is their ground game, right? Aspinall is still a killer. He's a submission hound on the ground where Pereira oh, yeah. maybe is a little bit weaker in that department. Not bad, but certainly not at the level of Aspinall. So when you're weighing all of those things, it's like, yeah, I'm going to make more money against a potentially easier fight in Pereira. Yeah, let's do that. And I think that's where he's coming from. To what extent was George St. Pierre ever criticized for anything resembling legacy preservation? Mm. Right. I mean, he fought Michael Bisping. He came back not when Luke Rockhold was the undisputed middleweight champion. Right. Yeah. With all due respect. Right. But he came mm -hmm. back in a setting in which he was a betting favorite to win the middleweight championship. He did not defend that belt. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that there was an obvious like next guy at 85 that he was not necessarily willing to fight. Right. But right. Robert Whitaker was, I think, the guy. But Right? Like, was George ever criticized for trying to preserve his legacy the way maybe John is being criticized right now? No, I don't think he was. Michael Chandler gives us the final commentary and shares thoughts before his fight with Charles Oliveira. The highly anticipated rematch will see two fan-friendly bangers go at each other for the second time. The clash promises nothing but fireworks, and the evidence of their first fight should be enough for that, even without considering their subsequent bouts with different opponents, which generally became the most entertaining fights on the cards they were on. For Chandler, this is especially a crucial moment. An argument can be made that he's sort of at a crossroads in his career. At 38 years of age, competing in the lightweight division, especially after inactivity for quite some time due to waiting for the Conor McGregor fight to finally materialize, which never did, is not the easiest thing to handle. In case of a loss, he most likely won't retire, but his options would pretty much shrink to getting a couple of more fights with relatively big names and forgetting any championship ambitions for good. But in case of a victory, the whole equation changes. Mike shares thoughts on the fight. I got shot out of a cannon when I came to the UFC right away. 26, 26 months, six training camps, five fights, every single fight, fight of the night, fight of the year, debut of the year, knockout of the year. Um, just craziness and I got caught up in it in the sense that I was doing all the work physically but it was very hard to really love the sport and see it from the lens that I need to see it from and uh, I'm rejuvenated I am recalibrated and that was the coiling of the spring for the springboard to make me UFC champion in 2025 you know I had two and a half minutes of UFC octagon experience at UFC 262 in Houston Texas May 15th 2021 when Charles Oliveira shattered my dreams of becoming the number one guy in the world um, at that point he had 20 UFC fights decorated UFC star uh, became the champion that night he had his run you know the question was asked to him uh, last night at the press conference what what keeps you fighting? You've already created a legacy for yourself. You've already been UFC champion. You are a first ballot Hall of Famer. I don't have that. Therefore, I am hungrier than him. Dana White is trying to change John Jones's mind on retirement and get the idea of potentially fighting Alex Pereira after UFC 309 out of his head. This week's press conference and subsequent individual interviews involving John and Dana clearly showed preference and intention of all parties as it relates to the most optimal outcomes for all sides. John on one hand, wants to get rid of the pressure of taking the Tom Espinal fight and start building up a blockbuster Alex Pereira clash, which would serve as a retirement fight in case he decides not to retire after Stipe bout. Dana, on the other hand, has different plans. He's with the majority of fans on this one, 
who desire to see the GOAT unify belts with the interim champion, and a fighter that presents a higher degree of danger to him than Alex Pereira. This option would also not disrupt the continuity of heavyweight championship and not leave open questions about absurdity of a title holder fighting someone else than an interim champion in his own division. While he started indirectly pressuring John to reconsider his hard stance on not being interested in fighting Tom earlier this week, now it seems Dana's getting much more aggressive and he's not mincing words. Well, of course, you know, obviously a guy like John Jones has had a career that you know, if he wants something, we would do it. But you can't just want to do a, a, a fun fight and not fight the interim heavyweight champion, the guy who's who, who's next. Because if John Jones retired on Saturday, Tom Maspinall would be the heavyweight champion. So um, opportunities were given to John Jones. He was 23. He was the youngest uh, heavyweight champion of all time. Now, as he sits where he sits, it's his obligation to give it to the younger guy to give him that opportunity. And if he beats Tom Aspinall, then yes, I would do the Alex Pereira fight. Stipe Miocic's patience has run out with John Jones and his antics. The always calm and friendly former heavyweight champion was seen ripping a microphone off his shirt and yelling at a cameraman after Jones's comments during their face off. We saw how irritated Stipe looked when John told him not to mention his kids ever again to which Stipe responded by telling him that he never mentioned his kids and shook his head in disbelief. What happened after the two fighters walked off the stage, we didn't get to see, but Daniel Cormier revealed that Stipe was acting in a manner that is opposite of his usual demeanor and temperament. In the final interview before UFC 309, DC shared thoughts on the matchup between Jones and Stipe, and when asked whether John's unexpected trash talk toward the former champion and comments about the bout, now being personal, have gotten under Miocic's skin or is it just meaningless pre-fight antics? Daniel revealed how angry Stipe was after his face-off with John that resulted in an interesting moment. A lot of greats do. Like, he liked that. He likes it. He operates well in that, too, right? Like, he operated well in, the, in our series of fights, and he doesn't mind it. You know, we just talked on the weigh-in show, and he spoke about... Um, it was true. He didn't make this up. He said, I heard Stipe say it. And he goes, I'm not lying. So in his mind, yeah, it's, it's the absolute truth. And he's he's operating under the idea that Stipe Miocic insulted him, insulted his family, and he wants to make him pay for it. And what's Stipe Miocic operating under, you think? Like he can, he's if mad. he went, yeah. He's mad, you could tell. Like when he got off of the stage yesterday at the press conference, John said, don't talk about my children. And Stipe goes, I did not talk about your kids. And he was kind of like shaking his head. Went off the stage, ripped his mic off, told him bad and stopped filming. He was so mad and upset, yeah. 